name, uh, and click on that question mark button, a text box will open up as you click on that, and you can indicate your <coughs> question by keying it into the dialog box. And at the end of the presentation, I will announce those questions for the presenters. And welcome, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, we have Sturdy Pro Solutions, the developers of the automated inventory cycle count solution for Sage 500, and uh, Starship with us, Caroline Walsh, VP Marketing and Sales. Uh, they do shipping automation for Sage 500 and all the Sage products, a market leading solution. And a little bit about Sturdy Pro. Uh, they have a, a few different enhancements that they offer, and one of their flagship enhancements is this automated inventory cycle count module that we're going to be discussing today. And it just makes it uh, the the update process of automating your inventory cycle counts much easier and efficient and accurate. And it just takes the headache out of those year-end physical physical inventory counts that I'm sure everybody um, enjoys. And then we have Starship with us. They're a gold development partner and they've been doing integrated shipping solutions with Sage uh, for 15 plus years and they have also been uh, working with other ERP products since 1989s in addition to uh, Sage. So they are market leaders and they've really mastered the capabilities of working with the carriers and their partnerships. They're great at partnerships, um, great with working with all the partners out there, and have a wonderful rep rep uh, reputation. Uh, lots of strong relationships with EDI providers and warehouse management providers as well. So with that said, we'll move along to our workflow. So we're going to be talking about how Sturdy Pro Solutions Automated Inventory Cycle Count Solutions takes the headache out of that year-end physical inventory count process and automates the process by um, you know, the consistent uh, scheduling of inventory counts uh, with a spe specific triggers and email notifications between warehouse personnel. And then that information goes into uh, Sage 500 ERP and then it updates Starship and Starship automates the shipping of all sales orders and order entry into Sage 500 by rate shopping all the carriers based on all the rules of the shipment. So location, price, um, when the items need to be delivered, all of that um, is immediately considered and Starship will pick the best carrier to make the shipment and ship the product off to the customer. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Andy get started. Uh, Andy, I'm going to hand over. Oh, Eddie, I think that we lost Andy. I don't see him. No, I'm here. I'm connected. Oh, okay, so I'm going to um, go ahead and make you presenter, Eddie. Yeah. And which is really Andy. Thank you, Andy. All right. Thanks, Edja. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to see now the full presentation of the inventory cycle count process. I'm going to get to the full screen so we can take advantage of the all the screen sizes. All right. Well. Uh, as Adrian mentioned already, the product that we have helps uh, the companies to eliminate the uh, high cost uh, procedure that they do at the end of the year, physical inventory. Uh, the goal is uh, to make small counts uh, throughout the year on a daily basis. Instead of counting thousands and thousands of items at the end of the year, one time you just break that down into the daily count and you count the items on a daily basis and that will help both to uh, make sure your items are accurate, you're not going to lose sales and then at the same time your customers will be happy and then hopefully that will also eliminate the year end inventory altogether. So this program has been created from ground up by our company. We are, uh, we, we, when you start this program, the first thing that uh, it, the system is going to ask you to put is put the warehouse code.
So as you select the as you select the warehouse, all of the items get uh, loaded into the middle grid here. The purpose of this program, um, where you can go and assign the items into the yearly cycle count code. That's something that will help us on a daily basis to generate the counts. So as you can see right now, when I selected everything that uh, shown in the, into the grid, uh, the total number of items in my uh, demo system is, has 100 items into this warehouse. And all of the items that we have yearly cycle count, YCC, are flagged as minus one. So I want to talk about the uh, YCC, what that means. The YCC is yearly cycle count, where we assign that to the items. And within this program, then you can go and use different criteria and apply the, and then update the YCC of the, each individual items. <coughs> you will, you can apply to one to one items, or you can select the entire section of the grid based on your filters and you update the yearly cycle count. Here is the grid that uh, uh, that features with the filter similar to the Excel. If you want to filter the items by, let's say it starts with C, you will just type the C letter and then it will automatically filter. And it tells me that based on my filter, I have 14 records here that I can update. Um, the filters is very similar pretty much to the Excel uh, file uh, filtering process. Um, here we have uh, yearly cycle count code uh, that we're going to be updating. At this point, everything comes in as minus one. So what minus one really means is that, okay, we have not categorized the item to any categories, uh, to YCC categories. So at this point, if this is one, minus one, I can go and select just one item and I can tell the item needs to be counted, let's say, 12 times a year, and as I update this item to 12 times a year, it will automatically show in my summary section that I have one item that I'm counting 12 times a year. Uh, obviously, you have different options here. You can use your standard cost of goods sold ranking, gross margin, heat, and you can use that as a filter. If you want to use those criteria to select your items, you can say, okay, give me all the items that are gross margin A. And then I can click on the corner here, and, and then it highlights the entire record, and I can say all of them needs to be counted, for example, uh, 12 times a year, or any type of, uh, any uh, 12 times or even more. Uh, as I move you my mouse over here, it tells us that this value for the yearly cycle count could be from minus one to 52. Meaning, like, if you want to weekly count, you could do it. If you want to do bi-weekly, you still can do it. And then if you want to daily count as well, we have a special feature that is called force count all the time. So for all these items that are selected, if I push this button, it's going to flag this item force count all the time, and the item is going to be coming into my count sheet every day. Um, if uh, there is a situation, sometimes like there could be a situation where you know your warehouse person finds the item is in, 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 in not accurate and uh, the time for that item to be counted, let's say it's a month from now, you have an option of saying force count next time and what that does is it will put the item into the count sheet and it will send an email to the right to the people who needs to sign who needs to do the counting. Uh, but then the next day, uh, that item, after it shows up on the count sheet, then the item will go back into the standard schedule. So uh, right now, we have the items that are actually filtered in my situation. I am going to go back into the minus ones and uh, refresh my screen real quick. Um, we can use a different field, like uh, I can use, for example, average cost and filter the data by the average cost, and I can select the items that are uh, from $3,000, let's say, to, to $1,200, and then update them as uh, I'm going to do quickly four times a year here. And then the rest of it, uh, I'm going to update from... Uh, this amount. I'm going to say I'm, I would like these items to be counted three times a year. And uh, for my, my rest of my inventory items, 
can quickly highlight the entire grid. And for the rest of the inventory items, I'm going to just say that uh, I would like to count once a year. And as I do the update, it comes up with the summary. It tells me that there are three items each day I need to count based on my schedule. But you can see that there is one item I left as a minus one. So this is a good indication, for example, like when you bring in new items to your warehouse, those items are going to be automatically flagged as minus one. So you will know that there are items that you haven't been categorizing yet. So you can go there and filter all the items that are minus one and decide how many times you would like to count them. Um, you could check that item, for example, and say zero times, and that means that you reviewed the item and you don't want that item to be counted anymore. So this part is how you update your items and categorization them, categorizing them. Now, we have a section down below which allows us to set some options. Um, for example, I can set the status of this uh, inventory cycle count to inactive. Uh, which will stop generating daily uh, cycle counts, emails, and freezing the items and sending the emails. Um, if you want to just stop permanently for whatever reason. And here, one of the options is set count quantity to freeze quantity. This is really helpful if you would like the automated uh, counting process and have your people only focus on the items that have discrepancy. You can turn that flag on. Uh, include zero quantity on hand. For example, an item that's going to be counted today uh, has zero on hand. Would you like that item to show up on your count sheet? Yes or no? So you flag that. Uh, roll over YCC count large from small from 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 large to small. Like for in, for our example today, we have here items that are going to be counted four, uh, four times. Eleven items. After uh, 11 days when I'm done with this item, then it's going to go down to the next category and pull extra items. So this way you maintain three, three items each day to be counted, and you can make sure that your warehouse people are not idle and they can do the count every day. Now, put on hold the batch, because when we generate the physical count batch, you can put the book batch on hold automatically and put the comment in there. Here on the emailing section, you have a choice of uh, designating multiple people to receive the email. If you are, uh, if you have multiple warehouses, each warehouse can have its own schedule and it could have its own list of the people that could get notified as far as what items are going to be counting them every day. And each item that gets into their account sheet, uh, we track into our system when the item was last counted and uh, how many times it's been counted throughout the year. And as a result, like when we finish doing all the cycle count process, we can generate the report. Uh, at this point, I'm going to be using the, uh, the generate batch process. You have an option also going and scheduling this job to run on the back end. And as it runs on the back end, you can put like how many times uh, throughout the week you would like to do the, your cycle count. If you would like to do every day, you schedule that. And what time the job needs to run. Basically, when the job runs, it pulls all the data, sends an email to the designated people, and then creates the physical count batch inside the system by freezing the items and it's ready to go and to be counted and be entered into the system. But right now I'm going to be pushing the generate batch button. That generation has been completed successfully, so I'm going to say yes. And if I go back into, into process physical inventory program. You can see that today we have created the batch and that was the comment I had in my screen. And then uh, the items are in this batch has been already frozen. If I, I'm ready to go enter them, 
I can go here and show all the items that are frozen, three items that I set it to be counted three times, I mean three items a day, and those are the items. And uh, we can go and count and update the batch. Now, once you do this process, I mean, you're going to be uh, asked to develop some reports and show to the auditors or to your managers or to the bank that you are you have an accurate inventory. So we have created this explorer that comes with our package that allows you to um, to view all the detailed information of uh, the physical inventory process, the cycle count process that you do throughout the year. Since this is an explorer, you can group the by any column that is available in this uh, explorer. So right now I have it grouped by post date and I can go and look every day how many items I counted and uh, it will show in a very detail if there was any transaction. So the standard page 500 you cannot see the, the items that have, let's say you do the physical inventory process using the standard stage 500 program then if there is no discrepancy, you have uh, no way of going and looking and finding that there is no discrepancy with that item. However, with our system, we keep track of every single cycle count that you do throughout the year. So here, uh, for example, for this item, it shows that I counted on the 7th period of this year. There was no discrepancy. It could tell me in a very detail in which bin those items were when we were doing the counting process. However, for the for this next item in the same warehouse, and we see that there were transaction quantity is two, so basically there was actually some sort of a discrepancy, and the total amount was hundred dollars. When I click on here, I could see in a detail what bin or if you're using a serialized item, what serial item had that discrepancy? In my case, the problem I had, it was in the bin A101001, where I missed two pieces into this, uh, into this transaction. So this gives you the full control of looking into your history uh, by item, by, by period or by warehouse, by any different options and uh, generate a report and see in detail how your cycle count process is going. So that being said, I think uh, the, thank you again for joining to our webinar. I'm going to pass the control to Caroline where she can now show you the Starship, how it works with Sage 500. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Andy. This is Caroline from V Technologies. Hi, everybody. Um, so once you have your inventory under control, you'll be better prepared for the shipping piece, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, this is Starship that you're looking at right now. And Starship actually has a couple different interfaces to Sage 500. Um, some of our customers may, out there may be more familiar with the push, where you start with um, edit shipments or enter pack list and you push information over. Um, today I'm actually going to show you the pull interface where the shipment is initiated from within Starship. And um, in this case, um, with the pull interface, um, in some cases it can simplify um, your shipping process. So if you do not necessarily want your shippers to have to define cartons um, in the um, edit shipments, of 500, you can actually just define the cartons right inside of Starship. And when Starship updates the Sage 500 shipment, it will update the packaging and item information um, that was defined during shipping. Um, otherwise, you can also, if you're using like a ScanCo or an O2 Mobile solution to pick and pack your um, items, Starship can, that, those solutions will update the packaging tables and then Starship can read directly from there, so things will come in auto-populated for you. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So if we go ship against um, a shipment here, we're going to Starship's going to go to the Sage 500 database and pull up this um, shipment number 708. And um, in this left-hand pane here, you'll just see an overview of the shipment header type information. Um, this has actually been brought over as an LPL shipment. Um, so he, down here in the packaging view, you'll notice that there's um, a pallet and then my boxes. 
So um, in Sage 500, we're pulling the packages um, as the, the boxes, and then you can default those all onto one pallet. You can then modify the pallet quantity if you'd like from there. But I'm just going to drill into these guys so that you can see the items that we have associated to each of those packages. So these can either be defined on a handheld device or um, from within um, edit shipments inside of 500. So if I drill directly into this monitor here, um, I just wanted to show you some additional detail that we bring in from an item level perspective. And this happens to be going to Canada, so it is an international shipment. And with international shipments, we can also um, either associate Schedule B harmonized codes um, that are in Starship's database, or we can pull that information directly from within 500. So we have a mix of um, you know, different customers that will either store this in 500 or not. Either way, we can try to help automate that process for you. And if I drill into this commodity information, you'll see um, here's my Schedule B code. EEI classification, I just have these as exempt, but um, if your um, items aren't exempt, you may need to use AES direct to um, notify the government of your exports. And Starship also has um, an integration to that to make that process a little more seamless for you. Here's a certificate of origin, some just additional information about this particular item. Um, one other thing I wanted to note on this order here, this shipment, um, the email notification. So Starship does have its own email notification um, that you can set up where you can define multiple templates. The templates can, can, can contain Sage 500 data, and those can be so variables like order number, PO number, that kind of thing. Um, but that doesn't keep you from utilizing other carrier notifications. So if you utilize Starship, you would probably do the um, ship notification. But um, carriers like UPS also have delivery and exception notifications. So you might want to set up your um, email notification so that UPS notifies you of exceptions. And you can maybe notify the salesperson on this, um, in this order, or you can set it to a fixed email address so that you guys can be proactive about those shipments that may not be able to make it to your customers on time. I can also do a rate shop from this, um, for this shipment here. And so what Starship will do with the rate shop is it'll send um, a request out to all the carriers that you have loaded in the system. And it'll come back with a reply for your negotiated contracts. So from the from the LTL perspective, we have over a dozen LTL carriers that we can connect to directly. So that eliminates the need of going to each individual carrier's website, putting in the same information multiple times to do a rate, and then trying to somehow compare those. Um, with Starship's rate shopping screen, you'll be able to see everything in one place to help make your decision easier. Starship also has something called rate um, or ship via rules. And ship via rules can be used to basically do this rating in the background and select the carrier and service based on your parameters. So you may want to um, say, I always want to pick the least expensive way to get it there by this delivery date. And so Starship can do that for you. In this case, you'll see um, I have my charges here. And UPS Freight came in as the um, translated carrier and service from the ship via on the shipment. Um, but you'll see here that it's 204. And I can use Estes instead, still get it there in the four days, but save a little bit of money on these charges. So I'm going to just pick Estes from here and switch it over to shipping at Estes and then process the shipment. So in order to process the shipment, you can either click that button or hit F5. And then Starship will um, communicate with the carrier, print out your barcoded shipping labels if you have those, any kind of documents like the certificate of origin that you're seeing here. Um, and then it will update Sage 500 in real time. So this is the NAFTA CO because it's going to Canada. Um, and then you'll have header level information in this top area. And then the item level detail will be the body of the CO. And then same with the bill of lading, um, you know, header and then item level detail in here. Okay, so once you've processed the shipment, I wanted to show you a couple other um, tools that you have with Starship that come to standard with the application that you may or may not know about. 
Um, one of them is the email notification that I mentioned to you earlier. So um, when I shipped this out, you can, let me just refresh this here, see if I can get any. When I shipped it out, it um, created this email. So um, one nice thing is when you're shipping LTL, a lot of times LTL carriers, um, other than maybe UPS Freight, FedEx Freight, don't necessarily have an email notification. Um, so this will give you the ability to provide a shipment notification, um, you know, to your, for your LTL shipments, and still give you the ability to, you know, put your order information in there, um, the ship via, the BOL or the pro number, um, information about, you know, the shipment in general, um, as well as, you know, put information, maybe links back to your um, online store with coupon codes, anything you want to use here. Um, you also have the ability then to um, create different templates and then define parameters on when those templates are going to be used. So if you want a different look and feel for your um, LTL shipments versus your parcel, or maybe your drop shipping and you want to have a different logo in there, you can do all kinds of things like that with the template designer. And then these can go out in real time or you can set them up on a schedule or you can do it manually. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is our dashboard. So our dashboard is going to give your entire office access to the Starship database without needing to go into the actual shipping client. So this way, if for some reason um, the customer service team needed to a little bit more information about any one shipment, they could look into um, the shipment history view, um, drill into any one of these shipments, and find out all the details of this particular one. So um, information about when it was um, sent, the source information, um, the line items that were shipped, charges, packaging. So we do send um, you know, quite a bit of information directly back into 500, but this just gives you all of the information about a shipment if you really need to get to that level. This dashboard will also be the place where you can run reports like um, late deliveries report where Starship can compare the guaranteed delivery date and time to the actual one and let you know of any discrepancies. Um, and you can also see a few metrics here. So if you're um, looking maybe to for renegotiation of your contracts with the carriers and you really want to look at you know, what you did in the last couple of years to be better prepared for those negotiations, you can you know, get all that information um, through uh, this dashboard. Um, you can look at your um, shipments that were shipped out by user. So if you're looking at any one of your um, shippers and you have them logged in, logging into Starship, you can really um, see, you know, what they're shipping on a daily basis and in compare, you know, how they're doing against the other shippers. Um, location, so Starship supports multiple locations. Um, and then here's the one for the top five customers. So you can really drill into here and see all that information. Okay, I'm going to go back into Sage 500 now and just show you what gets updated in Sage 500 as a result of shipping that. So let's go into Enter Pack. Let's take a look at that. And that shipment number was 708. Okay, so um, you'll see here when I bring the shipment number up, um, one, the, com the comment here is being updated with the ship via so that you can quickly see that. Um, you'll see that the ship via here was Estes, even though the ship via on my um, shipment was UPS. So. We're going to um, keep the integrity of the original ship via that maybe the customer asked for, but we're going to add this here so that you know it actually went to Estes. Um, VOL number is going to go in the tracking number. So with all of these different LTL carriers, we utilize their web services to connect up with them directly. Each LTL carrier has different um, functions that they support and or not support. Um, so if a, if an LTL carrier's web service does support obtaining the PRO number. We always get the PRO number from them. Otherwise, Starship will generate the BOL number, and it'll use the BOL number as a tracking number in this instance. Um, the other thing that will happen with Starship is it'll update the actual freight charge here. Um, so your freight charges that you obtain from the carrier and negotiated may not be what you want to pass on to your customer. Starship has something called freight rules that will allow you to define how and when the freight is written back into your 500 shipment. So um, if you maybe want to um, give your gold 
our customers, um, give them the list price, or maybe your um, negotiated rate plus like 10%, you can define those you know, specifically either by um, customer type or very specifically if you wanted to do by customer. Um, sometimes we have customers using the, the shipment total as a means for determining um, if the freight is written back or not. Okay, that's all I had on the Starship side. I'm going to pass it back to Adrian, and I think we're going to go through some Q&A if anybody has questions. One second. Thank you, Caroline. I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen here, and you should be able to see the contact information for both Andy and Caroline. Thank you, Andy and Caroline. Great presentation. I do have some polls I would like to launch and ask the audience while we're announcing some questions here. Are you interested in learning more about shipping automation? If the audience could just take a, a moment to answer um, and that will alert Caroline that um, either herself or a member of her staff should uh, follow up with you because you have additional questions. So if you could just take a moment to answer that, that would be great. And let's see. Uh, this question is for Certi Pro. Certi Pro, do you have any examples of customers that have uh, saved with your solution? And if so, how much have they saved? Yes, we have a case study. It's on our website. We can send a link to them that the company used our system. They completely stopped doing the year-end physical inventory, and they saved uh, about $80,000 a year. Plus, their accuracy is really uh, they Plus, their inventory is very accurate now. It just seems like it would save hours of work um, at the end yeah, of the like year. You, uh, at the end of the year, you have to stop all the container coming in or stop all the shipments going out. You have to basically put all the items back in there. It's a really painful job doing the full physical inventory at the end of the year. And no matter who you talk to, they're complaining about that process. So this is going to help the companies to stop that process altogether. And I just want to remind the audience, I see 50% of you have voted. Uh, are you interested in learning more about shipping automation? If you can, just take a moment to answer this question. That would be great. Thank you for that. And uh, Caroline, it looks like uh, we have a question here for you. What is the cost for Starship? Hey, it's Caroline. Um, so Starship actually has variable pricing based on the number of concurrent shipping workstations you need as well as carriers. So um, whoever that is, if you have your, I'm sure you have your email there, I'll reach out to you. Maybe we can talk about your specific requirements and I can provide you with a better idea on pricing. And how do we go about implementing Starship? So on the Starship side of things, I mean, we you can either um, work with your um, Sage 500 partner or, um, you know, work with us directly. We do have um, several different support services options. Um, we have a baseline kind of basic um, install, setup, and config um, that's $700. And basically, um, is the idea behind that is that we're going to connect everything to your Sage 500 data, set up um, you know, your carriers, make sure all the printers and scales are working properly, and get you ready to ship. Um, usually that entire process is um, around a three-hour process. So once you have, um, once you're scheduled on our calendar, um, we usually you know, get you going that afternoon. And Andy, this one is for you. Uh, what is involved in the implementation of your solution for Certi Pro inventory accounts? Uh, it is a very simple process uh, from the point of uh, installing the software to the get to the point where implementing it. Uh, implementing it is really uh, simple from the standpoint. You can pretty much within a couple of hours we can uh, work with your team and. Uh, uh, designate the items and how many times needs to be counted, and then next morning uh, you're ready to go. 
Uh, the other part of it that you internally need to be ready for that process and do some trainings that uh, in the mornings people are going to get an email. They need to know what they need to, to do after they receive the email. So there's a little bit of training that uh, needs to be done in the warehouse and then uh, and then whoever is the warehouse manager, we can sit down with them. It's a very quick process of setting up the items as you've seen it. You can literally, if you if you're using ranking codes, for example, or if you're going to be using the cost as a method of um, breaking down your inventory into the different cycle count codes, and those are going to be pretty quick. Um, and it looks like we have another question here. Uh, we are considering moving to Sage X3. Would both these solutions move over to Sage X3 if we go that direction? Hi, this is Caroline. I'll, I guess I can start on the Starship side. Um, we do have an X3 interface for Starship. Um, we worked with the Next Tech Group to um, create that, but it's very similar to what you saw today using the pool interface. Basically grabs um, the order information and then updates the order just like we did with 500 today. Yeah, for 500 side inventory cycle count, if I'm not mistaken, X3 has a cycle count process already in there, so this will not be available for X3. And I'm not seeing any other questions. I just want to remind the audience that do have a poll up. I see that 33% of you have voted on this one. It would be great to get uh, an answer, if you may, um, yes or no to are you interested in learning more about inventory count, the inventory solution that we presented today? If you can take just a moment to answer that, we would sure appreciate it. And just to remind the audience, we do have a couple buttons on the webinar pane. If you have a question, you can go ahead and click on that question mark button and a dialog box will open up where you can key in your question and I will announce your question for the presenters. I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. I see 50% have voted. Can oh we get to God. 100? <laughs> Can we get out of here? We're 20 minutes early. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to go ahead and close that poll out. And then I'm going to flash the contact information one more time. And uh, please feel free to reach out to Andy or Caroline. Thank you both for your excellent presentation today. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Andy. It's my pleasure. Thanks, everyone. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.